Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Keep subscribing, keep liking, keep commenting, keep supporting us. We really appreciate. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram as Fanny and Jesse. Say hi, we'll say hi back. So today I'm going to be reacting to Does God Require Jesus Blood to Forgive Us? Uh, this is by Amit Didat. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. I've been so fascinated with everything you've been saying. I'd love to sit down and talk with you, but I feel that this is the closest opportunity I'll get to do that. So um, I had to narrow my many questions down to this one. Um, does, does God, according to the Islam faith, provide forgiveness for sins? And if so... How do we know that? What is what is God's promise to us? That how does He provide that promise? I'll answer that. And okay. I'll answer that. When you say and you see now, this is an old machine, old machine. So when I'm answering one, I forget the other, and then you might think that I try to hoodwink the people and you. So hmm. therefore, if you ask one question at a time, you'll be more merciful to me. <laughs> then you take a chance, another one, and another one. I don't mind till twelve o'clock tonight. I'm at your disposal. Okay. But if you can just one at a time, so it makes it easy for me. Please. Okay. Right. Okay. Do, does God, according to the Islam faith, provide forgiveness for sins? Yes. That forgiveness of sin is you sincerely repent of the wrongs that you have done. God forgives. He does not need blood, the blood of animals or of mankind. No blood. He says in the Holy Bible, he says in the book of Isaiah, he said, I forgive sins for my own sake and I will not remember your sins. What he wants from you is come to him, sincerely make an effort and forgive. And the parable in the Bible, the prodigal son, if you remember, prodigal son in the Gospel of St. Luke, prodigal son, father, a father had two sons. Who is the father in this parable? God. He is the father. He's got two sons. Means two types of his creation. One was who remains with the father. You know, prays, does everything. Nice, good chap. Goody, goody. Good fellow. The other fellow, like most of us, he says, look, dad, give me my inheritance. What belongs to me? My talents. All the talents. Give it to me and I will make into the world and fend for myself. And the loving father he said, all right, I know it's not good for you, but since you ask for it, have it. There, take it. And the son took it, which we all take. See, the talents. He's given us a lot of talents. And he went out into the world, as the gospel describes, and met bad company, mixed with bad company, became a drunkard and what and not. Maybe had AIDS and everything. He's lying in the gutter, you know, missing his pants. Now, in that condition, he realizes that he would have been better off if he was with the father. So, he makes a comeback. He makes a comeback. And the father sees him from afar, says the gospel. And the father runs to the son. He says, this my son was dead, is now alive. He was lost, is now found. He wasn't dead. Spiritually he had departed. So that was death. He was lost spiritually. Now he's found. So he embraces the son, welcomes him and tells the other son, he said, look, sacrifice the fatted calf that we may celebrate the return of the prodigal. Whose calf? Whose calf was that? The father's. See, the father out of his bounty, he makes the sacrifice. He is not asking his son, he said, look, you squandered all my talents, all my wealth. Now you go and stay with the swines, the pigs, in the pig sty for seven years. Look after the pigs, and after that I'll give you promotion to the sheep and, and the cows before you come into the house. That is not God. That's Shylock. Shylock talks like that. God Almighty, you make a sincere effort to return. He says, come, welcome. No price asked. No blood, no sacrifice. If he says, sacrifice is called for, it is own. Out of his own goodness, he says, I'm prepared to celebrate. He celebrates your homecoming. And the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, tells us the very same situation. Same principle. He says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Means you who do wrong, you'll perish. Unfortunately, in Christian literature, there's a full stop. No Christian literature ever completes the verse. They put a full stop. Where there's no full stop, they put a full stop. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. And they say, all have sinned, and so they have fallen short of the glory of God. Everybody perishes. No, no, please. 
continue. It's a semicolon there in the King James Version. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Father Adam sinned. We his children, we will not bear that iniquity. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. His son, Adam's son, we his children. Last June, in San Francisco, 300,000 sodomites, you call them gays, they gathered on a pilgrimage led by 50 lesbians on motorcycles. God will not ask Adam, he said, look at your children, that's rubbish. What are they doing? They're going to get AIDS. They'll get AIDS. No, God won't ask Adam. See, this is the law of God. He says, the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. And the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. The good thing the good man does, God says he'll get his reward. And the wicked fellow does wicked things, he will be punished. Way of salvation is there. He said, but if the wicked will turn, means repent, come back. But if the wicked will turn from all the sins that he has committed and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. That is salvation. You come back, you come back. Where God wants you to be, you ask for forgiveness, God will forgive you. He's not like Shylock, wanting a pound of flesh from you. He doesn't do that. He forgives sins for his own sake, not for your sheep and goats and Christ. Nothing. He wants nothing. He wants, needs no blood. He wants you, your sincere effort, wanting to come back. This is salvation. We're not trying to offend nobody, we're trying to have you think. And there's a lot of people out there who are like, you know what, I'm going through the same thing. So they just, just you know, uh, brush it off and whatnot. Let's talk about, because I think if we help them to see how, by using their brain, they can see how Islam is so rational and pure, it's the natural way. But this, these man-made ideologies, philosophies, these are things that we should stand and criticize and be like, hold on, this is not from the Creator. Tell us, why do you think so many people fall to feeling that, and is it possible that somebody can die for your sins? This whole idea hmm. that somebody is going to pay the price and now I can just do whatever I want or whatever the case. Talk to us. I've had a number of uh, conversations with people of Christian faith yeah. um, from various denominations, and the recurring theme of Jesus dying for the sins of those who believe in him, sins for humanity, and once we accept him, we're in. Yes. Um, and when I asked them, well, what about your crimes? What about, okay, so uh, and I asked flat out, okay, anybody who accepts Jesus will go to heaven? And they say, yes. I said, okay, well, what if a terrorist accepts Jesus? One who's killed hundreds of people, innocent people. If he accepts Jesus, he's going to just go to heaven, just like that? Yes, he doesn't have, I mean, and, and they just say flat out, yes. What, what about a rapist? What about a murderer? What about, you know, these, these criminals? What about them? Yeah, all they have to do is they, they believe in Jesus, and they're good to go. And even if they were believers before, they messed up, they can come back to Jesus, and they're saved again, right? The idea behind it, which seems to be contradictory, is on the one hand, the Christian says that the human being is born in sin. Yeah. He's born in sin. On the other hand, when you talk to Christians about theology and you say, well, if we're born in sin and we're prone to sin, and you're telling me I'm forgiven already, am I aren't I going to sin more? Because you've given me open license, and I'm, if I do sin, I'll say, hey, I was born that way. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. They'll say, no, people are good. If, once they have faith, they're good. I was like, but you said they're born in sin. And now on top of that, you've given them a justification for that sin. You've opened the doors for them. And so you find the reality. Mean, uh, you could speak in theory and say, theoretically speaking, yeah, Christians are supposed to be good, and you know a good number of them are. But the vast majority of society that claims Christianity does horrendous things with a crucifix hanging from the chest, or you know calling on Jesus here and there, but then also you know engaged in in, in foul sorts of language, right? Yeah. Yes, there are bad Muslims too. There are bad Jews too, and there are good Jews and there are good Muslims, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the the mentality that it's produced is one of being able to get away with our behavior. And uh, what this is the psychology of shirk. Basically what it, this is, is a person doesn't want to take responsibility for their own actions. Yeah. So they figure, you know, it's just like kind of like at work. If you have your, your manager is a good friend of yours, uh -huh, uh -huh. and then the boss is mad at you, you know what you do? 
you tell the manager, hey, talk to him for me. Yeah. I don't want to deal with him. And the manager's kind of got your back even if you come in late to work or you mess up or whatever. He's got, he's got your back. That's the idea, right? You don't want to deal with the actual person. So here we have violations against God, the Lord of the worlds. The entire psychology is what God loves Jesus so much. If Jesus puts in a good word, we'll be all right. I'm all good. Huh? So I actually don't have to please God. I can continue to spit on the, the, uh, the injunctions of God, what he commands me to do. I could kick them to the curb. And if I am getting in trouble, I'll just get Jesus to put in a good word for me and I'm okay. You got the JC Gold card. You, you, charge it up. Basically. Yeah. So now, and this is actually not just limited to Christianity. Any religion that sets up an intermediary between yourself and God does this. Mm -hmm. That intermediary is there because it's your, your pass into heaven without you taking responsibility, mm -hmm. without you having to stand up for yourself. We all want the easy way. Exactly. And the other thing this does, and this is very important, one of the very important side effects of Jesus being the means yeah. to save yourself or any other uh, uh, partner, any other uh, intermediary, is that you actually don't expect God to forgive you. You don't expect mercy from God. You expect it from... The, God is merciful to him, so he'll show you mercy. But God himself, yeah, he'll destroy you. He'll, he'll destroy, even the Christian believes he's destroyed nations in the past. Yeah. So they've actually, on the side kind of, even though they believe the Trinity or, or, or this is all one God, but to them, God is more punishment and Jesus is more forgiveness. Yeah. And they've kind of separated the two. To the Muslim, this is contradiction. If God is all knowledgeable and he's the creator of all things, and he is the, the absolutely merciful. No one can be more merciful than the one who created everything uh, in the heavens and the earth. But, so we expect mercy from him. If someone makes a mistake, what does he do? If he makes a sin, we're weak. Okay. Uh, simple answer. Ya, ya uh, ibadi alladhina asrafu ala anfusihim. O my slaves that have wronged themselves, that have transgressed against their own selves. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Don't you dare lose hope in the mercy of Allah. In Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a, no doubt Allah will forgive the sins, all of them. What you have to do, what is the path to forgiveness? Number one, sincerely repenting, being ashamed of what you did. Number two, promising Allah you won't do it again, a commitment not to go back to that sin, repentance. And number three, changing your behavior immediately. You change your behavior. You don't repent for a sin, go back to it next week, then repent again and go back next week. Because Allah says, وَلَمْ يُسِرُّ عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ They didn't insist upon what they did while knowing what they were doing. So you can't insist upon your sin. You have to, you have to firmly commit to let go of that sin. And if you're sincere, Allah will help you in walking away from that sin for life. He's the most merciful, the most gracious. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. He's ready to forgive. We turn to Him We just along. have to be ready to ask. قل يا عبادي الذين اسرفوا على انفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله ان الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا انه هو الغفور الرحيم Come Allah, here we come to serve you, here we come, no partner do you have, all praise to you, the universe is yours, here we come Allah, here we come. Uh, this was interesting to watch, I understand that of course if he's sin, God should be able to forgive you according to the various books that we believe in follow whatever the case um and i love that it's all about repenting truthfully you just can't say something saying forgive me but you don't mean it you yourself are going to feel like you're lying to yourself like it's pointless so if you want that forgiveness you really speak with your entire heart your your entire being and you really say whatever you want to say to be forgiven yeah, and the forgiveness happens but then um moving on to the second video he mentioned something what did he mention i've forgotten but i wanted to ask that the quran says it doesn't matter what you've done not the quran but i've heard many people 
that believe in Islam say it doesn't matter what you've done as long as you come to Islam all your past sins are forgiven all your past sins are forgiven so are you telling me that that person that committed murder rape whatever it is that they did now that they're converting to Islam does it mean that they'll never be punished for that bad um, did that they did whatever bad actions they were involved in that's something i'd love to know even if it's christianity are you telling me just because you're down on your knees bowing and crying out to god to forgive you for that murder you took part of you're telling me that god is going to forgive you and that will go unpunished because you've asked for forgiveness and i'm asking this to people that come from different religious backgrounds that doesn't matter if it's islam christianity you're a jew you're an atheist i'd love an answer to that because then it, i'm feeling then it would seem unfair to some extent yes you've asked for forgiveness yes god has forgiven you but the person that you did that to is too affected do you understand how then does the world move on from there or that person move on from that that's something i'd really really love to understand otherwise i understand the concept of uh all this for uh, the sin and forgiveness that we're talking about which i'm agreeing with but i'd love for someone to answer my questions let me know what you think if there's anything you want me to react to drop the link or the name down below and i'll be more than glad to react to whatever you suggest make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it to the friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video